look I'm here again I know a lot of people weren't sure you were wondering whether or not I was going to appear today well here is the answer to your question <laughs> hi everybody welcome here we go again it's Friday it's a brand new month power to the people and let's all dance round the maypole it's May the 1st and this is English addict coming to you live from the birthplace of English which just happens to be England <laughs> greetings to the proletariat nice to see you today <laughs> hi everybody this is mr. Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy I really really hope you are happy today I am quite happy for two reasons first of all <laughs> we have finally said goodbye to April I can't begin to tell you how much I have hated the month of April it was a really stinky month don't you think so can you think of another word another <laughs> adjective that you can use to describe April how would you describe the month of April how would you describe it what adjective would you use mine is stinky I don't know why I think stinky it was a really stinky month <laughs> it was unpleasant to say the least so one word one English word which English word would you use to describe April because April has gone now we can talk about her all we want <laughs> we can talk all about April if you want to but how would you describe April would you say April was a good month <laughs> Mr Duncan are you crazy of course it wasn't or would you say it was a bad month what would you say hello to everyone today and of course it is May the 1st not only that it's Friday Echo, echo, echo. I'm talking in my echo, my echo chamber. Hello. Hi. Are you okay? It's Friday. We have made it once again to the end of the week. And what a week it has been. For the past few weeks I've been with you live every day April has gone we have said goodbye to the month of April however how would you describe April boring oh that's a good one thank you Kaylin boring April was a boring month because there was very little to do many people had to stay indoors what about oh I see strange yes thank you Mika strange I suppose you could describe April as a strange month the month of April was very strange indeed Sandrine says April was freaky April was freaky I think so I would agree with you there hello Mohsen April was so 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 not a great month Shandran or Shandan also says strange it was a very strange month <laughs> Zoran says crappy oh yes 
that is a very strong word if something is crappy it means it wasn't very good so something that isn't very good something that you didn't enjoy maybe something that you think isn't a good thing we can describe as crappy it was a crappy month the word crap by the way is a very rude word in British English it means poop <laughs> I was really hoping to get through today's lesson without saying poop unfortunately there it was there it was crappy mm, I think so it was a very crappy month the month of April talking of the live chat I suppose I should also say hello to everyone on the live chat anyway hello to everyone on the live chat anyway flower oh hello flower espoir you guess what you were first on today's live chat amazing 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 it really was thank you flower vitas you were second today mm. your finger i think is becoming very tired because it would appear that you can't click it very quickly these days maybe you have worn your finger out it has <laughs> become useless because of all of the clicking also flower thank you very much you have a very fast finger you have the fastest finger in the world maybe mo sen says hello mog mog hello mog mog nice to see you back again haven't seen you for a while i haven't seen you for a while <laughs> hello also anna pika thank you for your little wave and also your beautiful rainbow as well of course that has become the symbol of hope for the future during the past few weeks hello also francesca kaylin and also peter hello peter nice to see you again sujin is here devoka or davoka is here i can't hear you it's okay yes i hope you can hear me now maybe i should go to my window and shout but i think that might annoy the neighbors to be honest bitriz says hi mr duncan happy workers day power to the people that's what they say isn't it yes you are right may is here it is the first of may and for many people the first of may is quite an important period so the first of may is an important day for many people here in the uk we are talking about may as well but many people think of may the first as yes as i said just for the workers we often think of may day as being the day for the workers all the workers will rise and they will get their rights international workers day so hello to all of the workers around the world if you are working at the moment or maybe you have been furloughed in your job which means you can't do it at the moment it is international workers day that is what it is also today it is something else as well it is bailtain can you see that word bailtain or bealtain it is the start of summer in the celtic calendar because the celtic calendar today it would be the 21st of march so in the celtic calendar it is officially the start of summer in the celtic calendar and of course here in the uk there are many traditions that would take place in the past we would have lots of fair maidens there they are <laughs> dancing around the very phallic 
maypole and may the first is often celebrated as a way of wishing that the forthcoming harvest will be fruitful it is all about fertility and that is the reason why all of the fair maidens dance around the maypole at the beginning of may it is something that hopefully will bring lots of good fortune for the farmers their crops will grow their animals will stay strong and all the fair maidens will find a handsome man <laughs> i think i just made that last part up so that 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 last part isn't real <laughs> i made it up although come to think of it it might actually be true may day I'm not calling May Day, by the way, for those who are wondering. So I'm not calling May Day because you will call May Day if you have a problem, if you are in trouble or danger. Maybe if you are flying an aeroplane and suddenly you have engine trouble like Harrison Ford did. <laughs> did you see Harrison Ford once again? I think between you and me i think harrison ford when he's flying his airplane i think that he's imagining himself in the millennium falcon that's what i think so he flies it like he flew the millennium falcon in star wars so that's why he's always having problems with his plane because i think he he thinks he thinks he's doing the kessel run <laughs> that's what i think so this week harrison ford got into trouble he flew over a very busy runway at an airport and another plane i believe was trying to take off or land as harrison ford went across in his airplane or as he calls it his millennium falcon so i think so naughty harrison ford not naughty harrison ford Oh, if, if he was here now, I would put him over my knee and I'd spank his bottom until it was cherry red. I really would. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. If you're wondering what on earth this is, this is my new show. It's called How Long Will It Take for YouTube to Start Disconnecting My Live Stream Like Yesterday? Did you see yesterday? I don't know what was happening, but YouTube kept cutting off my connection very annoying fortunately youtube being very clever managed to produce the whole live stream so you can watch yesterday's live stream complete you can hello to connell hi connell nice to see you here as well it is may the first it is when the <laughs> the common man rises up and says look we want our rights if you want us to work for uh, for you we have to have our, our rights hello also to Francesca maybe this environment has affected your behavior so smooth I don't know what you mean I'm not sure what you mean by that I'm intrigued mr. Duncan I would like to congratulate you on the 1st of May I wish you to be healthy and wealthy well <laughs> I am one of those things <laughs> no <sighs> not the second one I'm not the second one maybe the first one I am but the second one definitely not I hope you will stay strong and live long me too as the Vulcans used to say live long and prosper <laughs> I think so and look what happened to Mr Spock hello Shandan good evening sir good evening to you as well nice to see you here your magnolia tree is spectacular thank you we also have some big trees of magnolia with some different flowers you can have white magnolia you can also have pink magnolia so the magnolia in my garden is pink magn well actually purple it's sort of purple 
purple pink <laughs> i know we had an argument the other week didn't we about my tie because some people said that my tie is pink and some people said that it's purple so here are some lovely magnolia leaves and also some lovely flowers on my magnolia tree oh also as we saw yesterday we also have my apple blossom as you can see it's very windy today outside it is blowing a gale outside at the moment so there is my lovely apple blossom coming out as well i must say this year my apple tree is looking rather healthy i don't know how it's happened but last year my poor apple tree looked really unwell it didn't look very well at all but now it looks very healthy and there is lots and lots of apple blossom growing on my apple tree at the moment so who knows we might have lots of nice apples growing on the apple tree this year hello to you hello to you palmyra hello also pedro hello pedro pedro at the moment by the way he has so i hope you're wearing your mask pedro <laughs> i hope you are feeling all right i can't complain says pedro that's good that's the spirit that's the attitude that will get you through any adversity whatever goes wrong in your life keep that attitude and you'll be all right hello valentin hello also francesca mr duncan i was referring to all of your trees and bushes and flowers i think i would be more relaxed in that environment rather than the city oh i see what you mean there is nothing like being in the countryside as i often say i love the countryside very much if i had a choice would i rather live in the city or the countryside i was i would always choose the countryside every time no doubt about it hello hugo hugo hernandez hello to you nice to see you again belarusia hello belarusia the live stream is at 10 a.m here in argentina and it is time to do a lot of things soon i will be cooking you know i won't be able to resist asking what are you cooking today is it something nice we will be cooking something later on every friday this is something that has become traditional in this house not necessarily your house but this house we have a tradition every friday we like to have curry every friday night so i will be showing one of my earlier video recordings that i did with mr steve in the kitchen because every friday we always have curry in fact i have no choice to be honest steve says having curry tonight and that's it i have no say i have no say i have no say in the matter which means i can't make a decision myself i can't say what i think i have to have curry terrible <laughs> hello aranksa hello to you in the or die by region in the basque country there is a live connection at five o'clock english time with the or or die by bird center and it is a great living museum of nature i like the sound of that so that is actually five o'clock today british time i'm going to check that i'm going to have a look at that I don't know if you've noticed but on youtube there are lots of live streams lots of nature live streams on youtube as well and some of them are fantastic i remember about three years ago there was a web camera and it was following the 
the lives of a group of giraffes who remembers that and there was a little giraffe that was born and this tiny giraffe was walking around it was trying to walk on its little thin legs it was the cutest thing I've ever seen hello to Morella pink magnolia is male Ooh, white magnolia is female and smells smells wonderful I must be honest with you the pink magnolia or purple <laughs> doesn't have any smell at all it doesn't have any fragrance which I was surprised by however my lovely lovely lilac has a wonderful scent so I also have a lilac tree in the garden and to be honest with you a few moments ago I opened my window here in the studio and the first thing I could smell was lilac I could smell the lilac tree which is around the front of the garden very far away from my studio so the scent the smell the aroma from my lovely lilac tree is actually going all the way around the house in the wind it's great I'm really enjoying it hello to Pete Petra hello also to TS blue thunder hello blue thunder where are you guess what guys I'm now at the hospital because of a car crash my leg was slightly broke goodness me what is happening at the moment with my viewers could you all please stay safe I hope you are all right blue thunder new win Khan I believe your real name is so thank you blue thunder for letting me know that you are also having difficulty at the moment but something quite different from Pedro so I hope you are all right please keep in touch let us know how your leg is feeling so who else was in the car was anyone else injured is everyone else all right shocking quite shocking hello Adarsh hello Mr Duncan I have been trying so hard but my English is not improving often I lack confidence while speaking and end up unarticulated could you help well this is something I've mentioned before speaking is the hardest part of learning any language it really is I know I say this very often but speaking is the hardest part you can learn the words you can remember the words you can read the words you can understand English but when it comes to speaking as I said before it is a little bit like performing it is a little bit like going on to the stage to give a performance so all you have to do is do it more you have to become accustomed to speaking English because for all of your life you've been speaking another language and now suddenly you have to do this it's different and maybe you feel a little shy doing it in front of other people but I always suggest that you should record your voice so try to make a recording listen to the sound of your voice as you speak you have to love what you do whatever it is and speaking English is no exception so confidence comes from doing something again and again and again the more you do it the easier it becomes and the easier it becomes the more you want to do it it's as simple as that hello to Alapika hello Alapika I have read an interesting news article this morning it seems that people affected by will have antibodies that will protect them well some people are not sure at the moment there seems to be conflicting reports about whether a person will then be protected after they have had the thing that I can't mention 
hello palmyra mr duncan i wrote about a new british hero who raised money to help the hospitals yes that that was that is true i always call him major tom because i always think of the david bowie song but yes he has been raising money he was a hundred yesterday a hundred years old it is a sad fact though it is sad that someone has to raise money to actually support something that we are actually already paying for in this country so it is a strange thing the national health service is the service in the uk that provides free health care but we all pay for it through our taxes so through our tax we pay towards it but over the years unfortunately the national health service has become more overrun with people becoming ill having sickness and there is always a shortage of doctors nurses and also beds in the hospitals so it is a sad thing it is a sad fact that someone has to raise money to support something that has been there for many many years some people feel rather annoyed about it to be honest hello adrian mr duncan what do you mean with curry as a cooked dish you eat each friday is it chicken with rice for instance what mr steve makes every friday is actually fish it is a fish curry so quite often he will put fish in the curry and we will have spicy curry with rice always brown rice very nice brown rice i like it very much so that's what we're having every friday and in a few moments we are going to take a look at one such night every friday we always have curry today also we're going to have a look at some strange english words strange words in the english language that's what we're doing later hello everyone i didn't have the notification on time again sorry noemi i did send out the notification and also i did put a message on my little message board on facebook and also on my youtube channel however this is a problem that's been going on for a very long time i tell people that i will be on unfortunately many people don't realize i am on because they don't get notified unfortunately hello also francesca hello to oh i see devote devotcha or devotcha hello mr duncan i'm a teenager from russian how can i support my english level during the lockdown well one of the ways of doing it of course is watching english movies with captions you can watch my live streams you can watch all sorts of video lessons not only from myself but other people as well but i'm live with you here on youtube and it is a good way of listening and learning english because it is spontaneous this is live right now so at the moment it is 23 minutes away from three o'clock in the afternoon on a friday afternoon in fact hello francis hello also ts nice to see you here as well so many people are here mr duncan when do you think you will be able to go back into your garden asks anna the weather at the moment is very strange we've had a lot of rain today i will just show you outside you might be able to see outside at the moment it is actually quite sunny so the sun is shining 
on my apple blossom it is also shining on my magnolia however this morning it was also very dull and cloudy it looked as if it was going to rain so at the moment here in the UK the weather is very unsettled I am hoping maybe next week to go into the garden again at the moment it is not looking good because the weather is changing so often at the moment so often I hope that answers your question oh Lewis a uh, Lewis Mendez is here again guess what we are going to have a look around Paris in a short while as well it is a year since I went to Paris can you believe it a year since I went to Paris so we are going to look at a video clip a little bit later on of me in Paris <gasps> also oh, would you like to see a little bit of nature with Mr Steve here we go very close to our house there is one of our neighbors and they have horses and I remember last year when Mr Steve and myself we were going for a walk and we came across our neighbors horses and they are so lovely So cute some lovely horses in my neighbor's field oh isn't that nice I know yesterday we were talking a lot about nature and we were talking about birds and at the moment the birds are going crazy outside building their nests some of them have already got little chicks to take care of so a lot going on at the moment hello to Grazina hello Grazina nice to see you here today Noemi I am happy because the gardener has cut the grass we have been going on for two months without the grass being cut 
and we've had a lot of rain so I imagine the grass will grow very quickly if you have lots of rain and it looked like the jungle I imagine it did fortunately he has started to work again so Noemi it looks as if you have your gardener back after crazy April so now it's come to an end Anapika Steve is a very horse friendly man or he is very horse friendly that means he gets along with horses and animals I don't know why but both of us both myself and Steve we always get along with animals quite well we do I don't know why but we do would you like to come with me on a little trip we are going to take a trip to a place that isn't very far away from this country we are going to hop across the English Channel we are going across to France to have a little tour around one of the most romantic cities in the world Paris So there it was some shots taken last year during my trip to Paris with Mr. Steve we had a free holiday exactly one year ago can you believe it <laughs> interesting Ah, bonjour, madame, monsieur, je m'appelle Monsieur Duncan. Oh, hello there. Ooh la la. Nice to see you here today. <laughs> I am wearing my my little red beret. I hope you are enjoying my fashion style today. Very nice. Ooh. Hello to the live chat. Nice to see you all here as well. Paris is love. When we think of Paris, we often think of romance. We think of sitting maybe in a lovely cafe, looking out across the Paris skyline and in the distance, twinkling in the night sky, the Eiffel Tower and everything is very lovely. So we had a lovely time last year in Paris. Thank you very much to Mr. Steve's company because they gave it to us. They gave us a free holiday in Paris last year. And I still can't believe that it didn't cost us anything. <laughs> Quite amazing. Mr. Duncan, at the moment, Paris is dead. What a pity. It is a large prison. I would imagine it is. So I thought it would be nice to have a little look at a time, a period of time when things were different. We might even have a little trip along the Seine later on. Would you like to do that? But right now we are going to take a look at something that has become quite a tradition over the past two or three years in this house. 
every Friday night we will make our traditional Friday night meal it is our lovely delicious spicy curry night mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh hello there welcome to my kitchen it is now Friday night and I am busy here preparing my special Friday night treat Mr. Steve will be coming down soon to help me but for now I am here by myself and can you see what I'm doing I'm peeling some potatoes we need to have some potatoes peeled peel it's a very interesting word the word peel can actually be used in many ways for example peel can mean to remove something slowly for example you peel the skin from a potato you peel the potato also peel can be described as removing your clothes slowly so again it is something you are taking off very slowly so you peel your clothes off also the word peel can mean to ring ding ding a bell the sound of a bell ringing can be described as peel and of course the thing that you remove from the potato can also be called peel so the word peel can be used in many many different ways so as I mentioned we are, we are having curry tonight <gasps> yes every Friday night Mr. Steve and myself we always have a delicious curry so Mr. Steve will be joining me very soon here in the kitchen and between you and me he will be doing all of the hard work all I have to do is peel these potatoes I think some of these potatoes have actually become a little bit rotten so I'm going to have to be very careful peeling these potatoes I have to make sure that all of the rotten parts are removed because of course no one wants to eat rotten potatoes of course not Mr. Steve will be joining me a little bit later on the live stream and also here in the kitchen because Mr. Steve will be cooking the curry so all I'm doing for now is preparing the meal preparing the potatoes but to be honest with you Mr. Steve will be doing most of the work we will wait for a few moments for Mr. Steve to come down the stairs and join me here in the kitchen so as you can see Mr. Steve has now joined me in the kitchen so what what are we eating tonight Mr. Steve curry we're having a curry tonight so uh, I've got everything that I need laid out here and uh, it's a strange curry this because it's my own sort of uh, concoction oh. there's a word concoction concoction and uh, it's Mr. Steve's special mixture special recipe it's a bit of this a bit of that so <laughs> I'm starting off with some red split lentils there we go shall I bring those close to the camera lentils because uh, I like lentils in a curry and they're good for you lentils uh, are very good for you so this uh, particular curry is going to be a fish curry but <gasps> also with lentils as well and what style of curry is it Steve so this is a particular oh, style of curry the style of curry well I'll show you that I'll just put this on first okay then. because these take about 20 minutes to cook 
I must say we are enjoying the banging sound. So, uh, uh, you know me, I'm always banging away in the kitchen. So I'll just put this onto the, uh, the stove or the cooker and we'll, we'll get that cooking. So I'm going over here. So, so how long do we have to cook the lentils for? How long do they take, Steve? Right, the lentils take about 20 minutes, which is what I just said. <laughs> oh, I, did, I missed that. <laughs> right, so this is what we're having. Oh, look at this. We're having Boona style curry. Yeah, you can give me a bit more or else. Boona. Boona style. Which is... Uh... And the thing, I, the thing I love about this, Steve, is that this, this tastes as good uh, as a curry that you would have in a restaurant. So if you went to a restaurant and had, had a Boona, it would taste as good as this stuff in the jar. We are, we're not being sponsored, by the way. Just in case you think we're being sponsored by this company, we're not. Lloyd Grossman, but uh, should you wish to uh, contact us and, uh, <laughs> and uh, ask us to sponsor him, we would be very happy to do so because... <laughs> yes, <laughs> just in case Lloyd Grossman is watching and you would like to sponsor my English lessons, please, please get in touch. Thank you very much. Well, well let's give him another plug because uh, <laughs> there's lots of other flavours. That was the Boona, which is essentially... Uh, a very a curry based around onions and tomatoes. Onions and tomatoes. <gasps> well, I think there's all curries have got onions in, haven't they? But that one's got a lot of tomatoes in. We could also have a Rogan Josh. <gasps> there we go, a Rogan Josh, which uh, tomatoes and fried onions with ginger and coriander. Oh, delicious! I'm, I must admit, there's one thing I love about curries. Just like this. It's when it has lots of ginger in it. Now, not many people like ginger. Some people hate ginger. And what's the other one, Steve? The other one is the old favourite, tikka masala. Uh, you know, if you're uh, not keen on a strong curry, that's the one to have. Tikka masala. So that's quite a mild one. Quite a mild one with, with lots of cream and uh, yoghurt in it. So it's a bit more fattening than your average curry <laughs> so that particular um, one isn't very healthy now i bought these they were on offer today really yes they're normally around two pounds 20 a jar okay uh, but they were on offer today for a pound a pound each so i got a a dozen of them 12 of them uh today so that keep them in there and so you know saving a lot of money uh, i tell you what they used to do, there's only, I'm being very pedantic here, pedantic, there's another word. Pedantic means very picky, a person who picks the fine details or the faults out of everything. When they first brought these uh, curries out years ago, they used to have 425 grams per jar and then they shrunk the jars down and uh, charged the same price. Yeah. Well, this and, happens uh, a lot nowadays. You know, you know the same thing happens to chocolate bars as well. Yes. They keep making chocolate bars or boxes of chocolate smaller and smaller. And every time they do that, they don't reduce the price. So they make the product smaller, but they don't lower the price. They charge exactly the same thing. It really annoys me. Yes, and the problem is that's not quite enough for two. The jar isn't quite big enough for two. Whereas previously it was, so I have to bulk it out with some lentils. I add a bit more of my own curry powder into it. And, well, you'll see what else I add in to uh, turn this from what is... What, they're already very good, but I add some extras to it to spice it up even more. So Mr. So, Steve uh, uses this particular mix, but also he adds his own little magic ingredients mm. as well. I do. Right, I've got to keep my eye, eye on those lentils because they boil over very easily. I've just realised I'm starting to sound like Lloyd Grossman. This is how Lloyd Grossman talks. <coughs> Hello, my name is Lloyd Grossman. I don't think anyone will know. I don't think anyone will know who Lloyd Grossman is, but anyway, he used to be on television all the time, but nowadays he, nowadays he is a, a celebrity chef. 
Okay, so while those lentils are cooking, I'm going to prepare some other things. So the rice. About right. They're all wet in there for some reason. We're we'll just uh, rinse the rice with some cold water. I don't know why we do this, but uh, we do. So that goes in here. So Mr. Steve has just rinsed the rice. Oh, right, now the potatoes are in there, that Ooh. threw me. So there we go. Put a bit of water in there, but I like to cook because we like uh, sweet potatoes. Ah. There we go. We really do like sweet yeah. potatoes so much. We like sweet potatoes. I'm just going to do one today. Just one? Just one. Oh, the, uh, yes. The lentils, they're very prone to boiling over uh, the lentils. So I shall just peel this uh, sweet potato like so. And I like to cook the sweet potatoes in with the rice rather than cooking them separately because then you'll retain a lot of the goodness that comes out of it and it saves a saucepan. Retain. I love that word, retain. If you retain something, you keep it back. You keep it back. You preserve it. You retain. So I'll give those a little rinse and then I'll put those in with the rice like that. And uh, there we go. Oh, yes, there we go. Uh, so they're in with the rice. And I'll put those on for a slow cook. And uh, I'm also going to let's get rid of the rubbish here. I won't do that now. I'm also going to put some extra tomatoes in as well. So I'll wash those. Uh, but I'm also going to rinse the tomatoes to get rid of the pesticides, <laughs> which you might think sounds a bit strange. This is something but, uh, that Steve does a lot, actually. He does. I do a lot. He does it all the time. So this is something Steve does. He always he rinses everything, and I mean everything, in vinegar. Even his strawberries. When he has strawberries, he, he even does does it with the strawberries. So he puts the strawberries in vinegar because he, he thinks it will get rid of all the horrible additives and pesticides that are on the vegetables and also on the fruit. It does. This is a mixture of water, vinegar and salt. And then I just, five minutes, soak any fruit or vegetable well, not all fruit and vegetables, but ones that I think are going to be prone to collecting the pesticides and uh, like strawberries, things like that. Strawberries. And I like to wash. wash tomatoes, them out. strawberries, and um, do, do you do it with blackberries, Steve? Yes, fruit. Any, any fruit that could have been sprayed. So most fruit. Most fruit. I don't bother with, if it's not organic, if it's organic, then I don't bother. Uh, but if it's non-organic, I will always rinse it, just in case there are a few pesticides lurking on the outside. So let me get rid of this rubbish. Uh, you might notice here, by the way, that these potatoes, these sweet potatoes, are organic. Can you see on there? Yes. Can you see? They are actually organic sweet potatoes. So was the rice and so was are the um, lentils. Now let's see how the lentils are doing uh, because they need a stir. So I've got my wooden spoon and I'm going to give them a stir so I'm going over here. Right so uh, the lentils are nicely cooked 
So next stage is to add the, uh, the curry sauce, uh, which is Boona we're going for. So I'll put that in. There. Swill it out with a bit of water because just to get all the lovely juice out of there. Um, a bit of quick stir. I'm slaving away in the kitchen. Slaving away. It's an expression often used to describe someone who's working hard in the kitchen. Uh, some garlic granules, because I can't be bothered to buy fresh garlic and cut it up. That is better, but this is a, a substitute. So I'll add some garlic granules. I will add the fish. So I've got uh, mackerel in spring water, which I've drained. Uh, and I'm going to add those in now. Gives us some... Uh, I'll say one thing, Steve, it's very fishy, the smell. <laughs> mackerel is one of the smelliest fish. It's very smelly. Uh, but in a curry, it's very nice. And it's very healthy because it's got lots of healthy fats in it, mackerel. And uh, we've just got a small tin in there. So we've got some protein. Mm. And uh, I shall bring that to the boil. I will add my uh, tomatoes, which are now happily devoid of pesticides. <laughs> devoid. That's a great word. If something is devoid, it is, it is without. It is without it. It is devoid. There's already a lot of tomatoes in this curry sauce, but I like to add some fresh tomatoes as well just for a bit of added flavour. So we can leave that to cook, but when it's come to the boil and just before we serve it, I will add this as a final addition. And it's my favourite. It's garam masala. Ah, we saw that earlier, because we were earlier, earlier we were talking all mm. about samosas. I... Samosas. At the start of today's live stream, we talked about samosas, and I said that Mr. Steve likes to put that in his baked beans. I add this to everything. It's absolutely delicious. It's aromatic, spicy. It's not. It's not um, strong in the sense that it's it, it's hot. It's just very flavoursome. So you can add this to everything. Oh, I just love the smell of it. So I'm going to add that in, in about five minutes time. For those who have just joined us, hello, this is Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan on a Friday night, but for those who are worried that this is not a live stream, don't worry, it is. We will be back live in a few moments. But at the moment, we are cooking curry. If you just want to cook some fish and give it a little bit of flavour, you can just sprinkle this on to fish, to meat, to anything, just to give it a bit of, a, bit of an Indian sort of curry flavour uh, without making it too hot. Uh, I love it and it's lovely in baked beans. That is one of the problems with curry because some people don't like it too spicy, but they do like the flavor and the aroma of the spices, but they don't want it too hot. They don't want the curry to burn their mouth out. Yes, and what makes a curry hot, of course, is the chili. And uh, that's what makes it very hot. Whereas this is everything but it doesn't have the chilli in it, so it gives you the flavour without the heat, the spice. So I'm ready to add the garam masala now, because this is all cooked, the fish is already cooked anyway, the lentils are cooked, so I'm going to add this in. I need a teaspoon. Uh, as we said earlier, Miss... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Here we go. Here comes the garam masala. Only a teaspoon because otherwise you can't taste anything else. Oh, oh the smell coming off there. It's absolutely my mouth is watering at the prospect of eating this lentil fish curry. And as I speak, the rice is coming to the boil and we've got the sweet potatoes in there as well, cooking with them. Uh, so that's coming to the boil. So I think that's about it. We're nearly ready to eat. I'll give it 10 minutes. Oh no, I've got to go upstairs and do my exercises. Mr. Steve is going upstairs. He almost forgot there. Did, did you see that? He forgot that he had to go and do his exercises upstairs. Don't worry, you won't see that. <laughs> right, bye for now. I'm back in the studio, or are you going to film us eating this? We'll just carry on, shall we? So we will be back in a moment um, at the dinner table. So we will actually be sitting at the dining table ready to eat the meal right now through the wonders of modern editing. So there it is. Our Friday night curry is ready to eat. And now we will return you back to the studio. No, Mr. Steve, that's my potato. Oh. Ooh. I must be honest gonna be honest I have to be honest with you that has made me very hungry watching Steve prepare that curry has really got my juices flowing my mouth is now watering and that is what we are having tonight we are having that exact meal tonight I hope you enjoyed that something a little different I know a lot of people love watching Mr. Steve in the kitchen he is a master of cookery I think so he's amazing he has so many abilities as we were talking about yesterday I think it might be safe to say that Steve is multi-talented multi-talented I think so thank you very much for your lovely comments as well I was able to speak to you through the live chat as well as we were all watching that together <laughs> including me Ooh. All I can say now is I feel hungry. I really do. I really want to eat. <laughs> I want to eat that curry, to be honest. Unfortunately, I have to wait for a little bit longer. There were some interesting words as well in that video. Mr. Steve was mentioning a lot of words and I did explain some of them in the live chat. So I hope that was helpful to you as well. We are going to look at some strange English words in a few moments. But a couple of things I want to show you. I have been asked, Mr. Duncan, can you tell us where in the UK you are? Whereabouts actually are you? So I'm going to show you now where I am on the map. So here you can see a little map and I will also bring up on the screen my pointer ah so now I can show you exactly where I am do 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 so that is where I am in the UK that is my location in that area it is much Wenlock in Shropshire and over here this area here is Wales this is Wales a beautiful country a beautiful place very scenic and there are lots of lovely places to visit by the sea as well so we have Wales here then we have England England is quite a large area so all of this all of this right up to here is England down here we have London so London is way down here and I 
I'm up there. So now you can see how far away I am from London. I'm around a hundred and uh, around 160 miles away from London. So you can see there is quite a distance between us. And down here we have Cornwall. Again, Cornwall is a beautiful county. There are many lovely places around this part of the world. Over here, there is a place called Hope Cove. And Hope Cove is a place that we visited in one of our English lessons. We actually went to a place called Hope Cove. So there you can see exactly where I am in the UK. For those who keep asking, Mr. Duncan, where are you? Can you show us the map? Now you know I am right up there. So I am inland. When we say inland, it means you are not by the sea. You are far away from the land. And up here, for those who are interested, up here is Lake Vernwy. So this is where you will find Lake Vernwy, a place that I visited many times over the years. So I hope that was useful to you. I like to show you things that are different sometimes. And today is no exception. It is absolutely no exception whatsoever. So now you know where I am in the UK. For those who have been asking, now you know. Brighton. Hello, Anna. Brighton. Is Brighton a beautiful place to visit? It is by the seaside. Lots of fresh air, lots of seagulls flying over your head, lots of delicious food, lots of nice, tasty things to sample in Brighton. Definitely. Are we still talking about food? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hello, Tamara. They say a talented person is talented at everything. I'm not sure about that. I don't think I really have any talents. I think Mr. Steve is more talented than me. He can sing. He can remember lots of scripts. He has a very good memory. He can retain things very easily in his memory. So sometimes I feel slightly jealous of Steve because he can retain a lot of information very quickly. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at that. I'm not good at remembering lots and lots of words or scripts. So if I had to appear in a play, I would be hopeless because I would never be able to remember all of the words, all of the script that I would have to use on the stage. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it, I'm afraid. Shall we go back to France? We were in France just now and we are going to take another little look. This time we are going for a little sail along the River Seine.
la very nice and there it was some scenes from my trip to paris last year i hope you enjoyed that something a little different today we are showing a lot of things today have you noticed would you like to go inside a bird's nest right now i was talking all about nature yesterday and in my garden there are many birds building nests and it reminded me of the time when i had some birds nesting in one of my little bird boxes and guess what i was also able to record the action all of the things going on inside the bird box so this is something that i recorded when i was living in my previous house i actually set up a web camera and also I was able to monitor what was going on and there you can see there is a bird actually building its nest so on the screen now you can see the bird is actually putting some of well you have grass and you have lots of things including moss as well things that are commonly found in the average garden such as grass and moss and that particular bird is building its nest inside the bird box so this is something i was very pleased about because i was able to actually record it would you like to have a look at the chicks so we've had a look at the mother and now we are going to have a look at the chicks inside the nest so this is a little bit later on after two or three weeks you can see the chicks have been born they've hatched out and there they are getting ready to accept some more food from the parent so look at that that is an actual shot filmed in my previous garden that i used to have before i moved here and you can see there are lots of little birds these are actually baby blue tits they are actually baby blue tits and at the moment there are many nests around the area where I live they are all over the place all over the place there are nests everywhere so I hope you enjoyed that something a little unusual again I am showing you some unusual things today don't you think I think so as well Plotina says I like the way you say ooh la la French people are usually who use Oh, la, ooh la la when something wrong has happened oh i see <laughs> i don't know why i always feel excited if i feel excited i always think of ooh la la ooh, ooh la la something surprising something delightful but apparently <laughs> french people usually use it when something horrible has happened or if they are shocked about something we will see you are very keen on birds mr duncan that is true i can't i can't lie i do like nature very much ernesto is the first day of may the labor day also in the uk to be honest with you we don't really observe labor day here we do have a labor movement one of our main political parties is actually the labor party so they are the opposite of the conservatives so we have the labor party and their origins stem from i want to say left-wing ideology and we'll leave it at that okay we will leave it at that i don't want to get too deep into politics to be honest with you but yes we do certain people do observe labor day not everyone so here in the uk we also have our traditions with the arrival of summer and many people believe that if they wish if they celebrate in certain ways then their crops and their animals will be healthy and there will be lots of food for everyone to eat as the year goes on so we often have lots of ceremonies or lots of festivals however this year as you can imagine there are none we are having no festivals this year 
many people normally wake up very early on this day and they observe the rise of the sun on May the 1st because the Celtic summer begins today on May the 1st. I hope you understood that because I almost did. I almost understood it. <laughs> oh, I see. Lewis says you are right. You can also say ooh la la if you are excited. I think so. <laughs> As you can imagine, I use that word a lot. Ooh la la. It's Mr. Steve with some food. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. I like it. I always feel like going along to the um, to the to, to one of the Lacage Le Folle or something like that and watching the ladies lifting their legs up very high as they do the can can something like that. Do you like the sea Mr Duncan because I know that you can't swim that is true I can't swim I am very good at drowning I I, I won an award at school they gave me a special award for drowning it was a huge brick because they said that I swam like a brick in other words I would sink straight to the bottom of the pool so I'm not very good at swimming you are right however I do like to be beside the seaside I do like to be beside the sea definitely hello Christine how do you make your fish curry well the video that you just watched with me and Mr Steve that that is actually it that is us making our mackerel curry even though to be honest with you Steve does cheat a little bit because he uses something that he buys in a jar you see mm, yes Mr. Duncan, have you ever visited Brittany and Normandy? These are beautiful regions. Well, Brittany, can you believe it? On my father's side, my family originated in Brittany. I am part French. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> but yes, on my father's side, I do have a little bit of French inside me. I don't know what part, but I do have a little French inside me <laughs> not to be confused with a little French man. Hello to Francesca. Hello also Lewis again. Lewis lives around 10 kilometers southwest of Paris. But by the metro. So if if Lewis uses the metro he can be at the Eiffel Tower in just 20 minutes. That's amazing. One of the things I was impressed with when I was in Paris was the metro. Amazing. The underground system of trains, the network of trains underground in Paris. I was really impressed with it, even though everyone kept warning me to be careful. They said, be careful if you are going to use the metro. Be careful. Everyone kept saying that. I don't know why. But apparently people often will will pick your pockets. They will steal things from your pockets. But we didn't see anything like that. Nothing bad happened during our time in Paris. In fact, we had a wonderful time. I really enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Mr. Duncan, for this nice information. You are welcome. No problem. I thought now I think actually we will now have a look at some more strange English words we are going to look at some more strange English words yes we are right now more strange English words it is true that the English language is made up of many words some of them common some of them are very familiar some of them are not so familiar even though they are used quite often. So we are going to look at some strange English words right now. The first English word we are going to use is. Stave. 
Have you ever heard of this word? The first word is stave. This can be used as a noun or a verb. Stave can mean to keep something away. So if you want to keep something far away from you, you will push it away. You will prevent it from getting near you. You stave something. Also, as a noun, it is a type of weapon. It is a long pole, quite often used <coughs> as a weapon. It is often used as a weapon, also a long piece of wood that goes upwards as well. When you're building a building, a, a piece of wood that goes up like that is also called a stave. Stave. Have you ever heard that word before? Stave. Lewis says, but pickpockets are everywhere in all the great cities. You are right. I'm not just saying in Paris. I'm just saying that's what people kept telling me when I was there. But to be honest with you, I've never been to a city in my life that didn't have crime taking place all around me, to be honest, including London. London, in fact, might be worse than Paris. Oh, Mr. Duncan, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I will get in trouble for that. Definitely. Conundrum. Oh, here's an interesting word. The word is conundrum conundrum isn't that great i love that word there it is conundrum a conundrum is a type of puzzle something that you have to think about carefully to actually solve the question or the puzzle is a conundrum something that you have to think carefully about a problem or a situation that is not easy to solve it will involve a lot of thinking. That thing is a conundrum, something that you have to work out. It can be something you have to say, something you have to work out. Mathematics, for example, you can have a conundrum, something that you have to work out in your head, something that you have to spend time trying to work out something you have to solve that make that takes time is a conundrum here's another one. Oh, this is one of my favorite words i'm sure i've used this word in the past jibber jabber i like this word very much jibber jabber jibber jabber jibber jabber to jibber jabber is to talk endlessly. You won't stop talking. You jibber jabber. You talk in an excited way. You won't stop talking. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because today I'm going for a lovely walk across the hills and I can't stop talking about it. I can't stop talking about it. Oh, please. I wish you wouldn't jibber jabber so much jibber jabber talk excitedly you are always talking about something talking 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 like that it can be rather annoying some people say that I jibber jabber I don't know what you mean how dare you how how dare you go on Greta you tell them how dare you yes how dare you say that I can't believe it Jibber jabber. Talking a lot in an excited way. Oh, I like this one. Can you read this word? It's a great word, this one. A very unusual, a very strange word. It might look like a word that is hard to pronounce. The word is paraphernalia. Can you say that again, Mr. Duncan? I will. Paraphernalia. 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 Things that you use to perform a job or a task. Things that you have around you that you need to perform a certain action or something that you need in your job. The things that you have around you that you use regularly. Maybe you carry your paraphernalia 
around in a small bag you have things around you that you need to use lots of items that are nearby for you to use maybe in your job maybe something you knew you need to perform a certain task you have your paraphernalia paraphernalia I love that word paraphernalia <laughs> and of course in the middle you have those strange occurrences there para ph so this part of the word is actually pr pronounced like the letter f paraphernalia paraphernalia great word i like it andy says my wife always likes to jibber jabber a jibber jabber my wife she always likes to jibber jabber yes I know what you mean I'm not saying anything else I'm not saying anything else Rosa says 241 kilometers is roughly the distance between London and where I live yes I think so I think you're right it is around 240 kilometers from where I live to London paraphernalia I love that word very much here's another one. Oh, now this is a thing this is a thing so this names something bracken 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 is a type of plant it is a type of fern and you will often see it if you are walking around an area of forest so you will see the trees above you climbing into the sky but normally around you you will have lots of bracken and this is what bracken looks like so there it is bracken you will see it often in movies when people are trying to make their way through the jungle <laughs> you will often see people trying to to fight their way through the bracken bracken I love that word it's a great word so bracken is a type of green fern something you often see in areas where there are forests maybe a jungle area here in the UK you will find bracken in many places including in the area where I live there is bracken everywhere there is a lot of bracken especially near to where I live because there are many trees many forests and also many wild areas where the plants are able to grow wild and free mm, bracken I like that word I like it a lot stickler oh here's an interesting word stickler stickler what is a stickler a person who is very fussy a person who likes to do things in the correct way they always follow the rules they like to do things in the right way they like to do things in a very precise way the correct way they are a person who is very fussy about the way they do things they are a stickler stickler so maybe you have a boss who always insists that you arrive at work on time you must never be late so you might say that your boss is a stickler for punctuality so your boss is a stickler for punctuality you must be at work on time because your boss is a stickler for punctuality so punctuality means arriving at the right time you are not late you arrive before or on time you must never be late so a stickler is a person who is very precise about the way they do things or maybe the way they want other people 
to do things. You always follow the rules. Mm. Anna, Anna Pika says, I am a bit of a stickler. Mm. I think Steve might be as well. I sometimes say that Steve is a stickler. Sometimes he likes to do things in a very precise way. Not always. Not always. Steve can also be a little careless sometimes. But then again, can't we all? Can't we all? Here is another one. We are looking at strange words today. Strange words. Here is another one. Rort. Rort. Oh, I like this one because it has lots of interesting uses of letters there. So you can see W R O U G H T. Rort. Rort. Quite often, if you are having something created for you, maybe from iron or steel, you will often shape the steel or shape the metal. You will twist and bend the thing you are creating. So wrought just means something has been reshaped. Wrought. You bend, you twist, you turn, you change the shape of something that is straight. Wrought. Quite often you might see uh, outside someone's house, you might see wrought iron so what we are saying there is the iron has been twisted and bent to create a beautiful shape wrought i hope you like that very much wrought something wrought such as wrought iron twisted bent the shape has been changed normally for decoration Oh, here's a big one. Oh, Mr. Duncan, that is a big one. That is a big word. Here's another one. Another word. Wrought. Lil says wrought is another difficult word to memorize. However, if you write these words down as you see them, don't forget, you can write them down. You can also watch this lesson again so you can understand the words more clearly so sometimes when you are watching my videos maybe you don't understand everything straight away later you can later you can i'm just distracted because i can see someone walking their dog on my other camera would you like to have a look here we go so in the distance over there there is someone actually walking their dog. Can you see them in the centre of the picture? I think it might be a farmer, but he's walking along and it looks as if he has two dogs with him as well. And that is one of the local farmers that you are looking at now. He is actually one of the local farmers that lives around here. And it looks as if he was taking his dogs for a little walk. Isn't that nice? A slight distraction there. Back to our strange English words. This word is related to something I was watching earlier, in fact. Gastronomical. Gastronomical. We use this to describe anything that is related to cooking or the preparation or cooking of food gastronomical you might describe something as delicious you might say that it was a gastronomical delight a gastronomical delight refers to beautiful delicious food the opposite of course is a gastronomical disaster that means the food wasn't very nice so in this sense we are using the word food and cooking the way something tastes anything related to cooking food gastronomical gastronomical and you might notice at the beginning of this word gastro also relates to the stomach as well eating 
and the stomach that's very nice another word oh here's another one this is an odd word however this word has a very simple meaning so the meaning of this word is actually quite simple quite a basic word even though it looks very strange the word is juxtapose juxtapose the meaning is side by side two things are next to each other they are placed side by side maybe you are comparing two things you are putting them next to each other you juxtapose those things you put them side by side juxtapose so that is an interesting word and it means to put something side by side you put two things next next to each other or to be nearby those two things are nearby you juxtapose those things mm. we are having curry tonight the curry that you saw us making in the kitchen that is the same meal we are going to have tonight can you believe it we are actually having that in fact mr steve insists <laughs> i have no choice mr steve he says we always have curry on friday nights so there you go that's what we're having here's another word this is a word that is very emotive this is a word that some people feel very strongly about in fact this word is only really used by people who are against a certain type of action to be honest vivisection vivisection so this is quite a dark word it means to experiment or to do tests on living creatures so if you are doing medical tests if you are trying to find out if a certain substance harms an animal before it is used on human beings we call that vivisection it is to act in a way that a lot of people disagree with you test products quite often well certainly many years ago in the cosmetic industry many companies used to test their cosmetics on animals they used to put the cosmetics into their eyes and they would force them to eat these things just to see what the effect was so you had to test on animals that were alive many people believe that this is a very cruel way of doing it so people who are against animal testing live animal testing they refer to it as vivisection 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 just means live autopsy you are cutting something open that is still alive you are operating or testing on something that is living not a very nice thing and there are many people who are against vivisection fortunately nowadays there are many companies that don't do it they have stopped carrying out vivisection oh my goodness <laughs> what mr duncan what is that what what is that word mr duncan i i know it's a strange word mr duncan but it's also a big word this is a word if you've ever seen a disney movie have you ever seen the lion king the lion king akuma oh let me just akuma matata is a lovely word akuma matata it is often heard <laughs> what <laughs> i don't know i think i need to lie down in a dark room i think so so have you ever seen a disney film and you've seen the animals talking they are almost like human beings so they have many of the characteristics many of the mannerisms that a human being would have so you are changing an animal into human form 
you are looking at something in a different way quite often an animal or maybe a type of bird anything you are changing the form and also the characteristic of an animal into something else Disney if you've ever seen the Lion King that is a good example of animals having human characteristics people who own dogs they will also do this to their animal and I'm going to show you the word here it is an thro po morphs morphize anthropomorphize 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 if you anthropomorphize something anthropomorphize it means you give an animal the characteristics of a human being a person they have the personality of a human being you are transferring one thing to another animal the way in which they behave or communicate and you will see this quite often with Disney films cartoons quite often you will see the animal actually talking and also behaving like a human being and this is the process this is what we call it anthropomorphize you anthropomorphize it means you change the characteristics of one animal to another in this case we are talking about animals talking like human beings and also behaving like human beings it is a hard word to say you are right anthropomorphize anthropomorphize so if you split the word up into syllables it's not so hard anthropomorphize anthropomorphize there it is you are changing the characteristics of one thing to another I suppose you could say that the Egyptians used to do that they used to create sculptures and also carvings of animals that appeared human so maybe certain Egyptian gods they had the form of an animal however they also had the form of a human being they were changing the formation of those two animals and combining them together anthropomorphize is what you are doing okay from one difficult word <laughs> to a simple word and this is one I like <laughs> wobble 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 something will wobble if something wobbles it means it moves from side to side very loosely wobble you might wobble as you walk like that wobble something that moves very easily we can say that it wobbles so a wobble is something that is uneven something that is moving because it is loose or maybe it is not straight it wobbles maybe your table at home when you sit down to have your meal maybe your table will wobble it wobbles from side to side I think so I I keep trying to pronounce the word that you just showed and my tongue doesn't find a way don't worry you can watch the lesson again and I will give you plenty of time because you can watch it forever you can watch this lesson forever and ever you can watch it once twice or even a million times if you want wobble something wobbles it wobbles here's another one oh okay then we have a very similar word here it looks very similar to the previous one dabble dabble this is an English word it is used quite often a person who tries to do something maybe they do something 
not seriously but they try they have a go at doing it they try it not seriously but they have a go they try it they dabble in that particular thing a certain action that you try but you don't do it professionally you just dabble you do it from time to time so maybe you dabble in home decorating you do it sometimes you don't do it all the time it is not your professional job you dabble dabble I like that word I like that word very much <laughs> we only have three more words and then I will be going it's almost time for me to go can you believe it our two hours have almost come to an end here's another word oh I like this one I like this one I like it a lot <laughs> yes wobble moving from side to side not straight and also not fixed not fixed so maybe a table that is not even will wobble isn't that annoying do you ever sit down in a cafe or a restaurant and you sit at the table and the table wobbles it, it's so annoying it really is very annoying Ong Trum yes dabble try something in a in the way in, in a certain way but not seriously you try to do it so what about this word what about this word Ooh. okay come on Duncan concentrate here is another word a strange English word but it is a real word it's definitely real honestly the word is brouhaha brouhaha it sounds a little bit like ooh la la ooh la la instead it is brouhaha 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 means an argument or fight something that is chaotic maybe an argument between one or more people <laughs> what how can you have an argument with yourself well you can I suppose I mean I, can, I I have arguments with myself all the time no Mr Duncan you can't do that well why not well because you can't you just can't but I want to but no you can't so I suppose you can have an argument with yourself it is a bit weird so an argument taking place between two or more people is a brouhaha a very noisy disagreement a brouhaha so if your neighbors are having a fight in the middle of the night and there is lots of noise coming from the house you might say oh at my neighbor's house last night there was a brouhaha a brouhaha an argument a very aggressive argument normally involving shouting or maybe things being broken get out get out get out something like that unicarina imagine using all these words together for the first time when you meet someone who is a native english speaker he or she would never talk to us again i'm not sure about that I don't think so they would be very impressed I think their head their head would explode I think so brouhaha is a big argument noisy argument taking place people disagreeing and shouting at each other is a brouhaha here's another one we have just two more so this is the penultimate penultimate Ooh, I like that word excuse me whilst I just enjoy the word I just said penultimate mm. penultimate penultimate ah that's better so here is the penultimate word by the way penultimate means the second 
to last so it's not the last word it is the second to last so the next word will be the last word this word is the penultimate word that we are looking at today scallywag a scallywag is a young person who is mischievous they do very bad things maybe they are a disruptive child or a young teenager we can describe them as a scallywag scallywag i love that word it's great scallywag a mischievous teenager a young person who does bad things or maybe they are always doing things that they shouldn't be a disruptive young person is often described as a scallywag it sounds made up it isn't it is a real word you can check all of these words later if you don't believe me maybe you doubt me maybe you doubt me <gasps> how could you how could you doubt me <sighs> I, can't, I can't believe it how could you doubt me after all we've been through together <laughs> after all of the adventures that we've had <laughs> Don't forget the adventures that we've had in the past. So many adventures. So I'm, I'm not lying. Those words are real, including this one. This is the final word that we're looking at today before we say goodbye. Harbinger. Harbinger. When we describe something as a harbinger, it is something that is bringing a message, a certain type of message. A harbinger something that comes along and gives you a certain message or a feeling we can also use the word omen so a harbinger is something that comes along and it is giving you a certain feeling or messenger or message so the harbinger is literally the thing that comes your way maybe a message or a feeling the harbinger of doom is something that is coming your way that might create problems in the future harbinger the bringer the bringer of bad news or bad feelings or bad events the harbinger i like that i like it a lot thank you valentin Vitas, Mr. Duncan, is there an English word? Calitas, or is it a Spanish word? I took it from the song Hotel California. The warm smell of Calitas. Oh, I see. Calitas. I'm not quite sure what that means. I know that I know the song very well. Hotel California. It's raining. Oh, my goodness. Look at the rain coming down. Oh, my goodness. It's raining. Welcome to the Hotel California Such a lovely place Such a lovely place We're Living it up at the Hotel California Such a nice surprise <laughs> What? I'm not sure what Kalita, Kalitas is It might be a type of It might be a type of wine. It does sound like wine, doesn't it? it sounds like the name of a type of wine, <clears throat> maybe. Thank you very much for your company. Oh, it's been so nice to have you here today. Yes, it is nice to share the 1st of May with you. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. We have talked about many things we have made the curry in the kitchen we've looked at some very strange words we took a trip to Paris twice we had a little look inside a bird's nest we also had a look at the horses as well with Mr Steve and that's it I will see you again soon on YouTube I hope you've enjoyed today's live English addict for all those who love the English language and don't forget before you go, can you also 
like and subscribe give me a like and also give me a subscription as well if you want to follow me there it is give me a lovely thumb on my video underneath this video you will see there is a thumb please give me a lovely thumbs up and then YouTube will tell everyone that I exist because at the moment not many people do not many people realize I'm here you see so if you give me one of these if you give me lots of these <laughs> then YouTube will share my videos with more and more people around the world oh that's nice I like the sound of that Palmyra says oh when we were students at university we called our dormitory the Hotel California because it because it was a very popular song at the time that is a very old song by the way it came out many years ago the Hotel California it also has one of the longest introductions of any song I remember years ago when I used to do radio presenting Wow look at the look at the, the rain again what is going on out there the rain is really coming down quite heavily look at that wow it is definitely raining outside I can safely say that the rain is definitely falling outside my window look at that wow as I was saying many years ago when I used to play Hotel California on the radio you could talk for a very long time before the, the vocals came in so before the people in the on the song started singing you could talk for ages so I used to like reading the weather or doing some sort of chit chat over the introduction of Hotel California because I think it goes on for about two or maybe three minutes it has one of the longest introductions of any song that was ever in the charts it's true it's true I tell you thank you very much Valentin we are getting some pleasure while speaking the English words and is is what only advanced English addicts can do have a nice day and have a nice end of the day as well thank you Valentin that's very kind of you yes it is definitely raining cats and dogs outside and that's what I said earlier that's the reason why I can't go outside at the moment to do my live streams because the weather is so unpredictable sometimes the Sun is out and then sometimes it rains very heavily thank you Adrian thank you for your live stream have a nice evening enjoy your curry I will I definitely will thanks for your original live stream I always try to do something different it is true that I'm not the same as other people on YouTube I'm a little bit different sometimes being different can be interesting it really can despite what other people say despite what they say thank you Noemi bye Lewis bye Beatriz Irene Palmyra Anna Pika also Anna Rita Belarusia Vitas Unicarina Pedro and all of you see you tomorrow says Noemi thank you very much I am going now I hope you have a good day enjoy the rest of your first of May and I will see you very soon here on YouTube look out for those notifications 2 p.m. UK time is when I appear right here on YouTube don't forget also you can send a donation I have some thank yous that I want to mention on my next live stream I've actually received a couple of donations on PayPal that I didn't notice because I haven't really been looking at my computer for the past 24 hours so imagine my surprise imagine my surprise when I found out that I had a couple of donations if you want to send a donation you can there is the address on your screen right now a small donation or large it is up to you really thank you very much for your help don't forget everything I do is free 
I do all of this for free it costs you nothing thanks for your company I am going now I'm going to have something to eat I'm going to have a cup of tea and I have a feeling that Mr. Steve would like a cup of tea as well that is it I will say adieu to you and you and you until the next time we meet here on YouTube this is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English of course that is England saying thanks for watching see you later and you know what's coming next yes you do mm, mm, mm. ta-ta for now See you tomorrow.